Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvelously well. This is a really exciting Fact Friday because not only is this gonna be a Fact Friday, we're also gonna get to try out a brand new plugin from Waves. This is one that promises to be one of the best Rongifiers randomizer plugins ever. The new plugin from Waves, which is free, free to download for free, yes? Doesn't cost anything free. And it's called the Berserk. So yes, it is Black Friday, which means there's loads of deals and all kinds of wonderful stuff. And of course, we're doing loads of them, naturally. So please see the links below. If you've got an email, you'll be notified of all those lovely details. Okay, so this is kind of a double whammy for this Fact Friday. We're going to do some questions, but we're also going to come over here in a minute and try out a plugin that's being released today by Waves called Berserk which apparently is an over-the-top distortion saturation. So we're gonna go and try it out. We're gonna give it a, what the other YouTubers would call a first look. So, I don't know, we'll go and play with it and see how it sounds. Um, I'm excited to hear it. Okay, let's get stuck in with some Fact Friday. I hope you had a marvelous Thanksgiving, those of you that were celebrating Thanksgiving here in the US and all over the world, of course, it is wonderful that we have this incredible community and we can all come together and share and so much information. So of course, please hit the subscribe, go to Produce Like a Pro, you can sign up for the email list, get a whole bunch of free goodies. If you're not already a member of the Academy, go check it out. We've had a lot of people join over the last couple of days. That's amazing, thank you ever so much. Leave comments and questions below. Of course, we check here for future Fact Friday questions. So without further ado, let's actually get on to some of these Fact Friday questions. Do you have any tips for mixing multiple stereo instrument tracks, i.e. Rhodes, strings, and vibraphone? None of them being the one that drives the song. What it might be is that the Rhodes is like, wow, 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 you know, very soft attack. Um, the strings, probably super legato. Maybe they have pixelcato parts, but if it's super legato, and then a vibraphone, the same kind of thing. So I get what you're saying, because all of those instruments probably, like I was explaining, have very, very slow attack times, well, and then end up sounding washy in the mix. So a couple of things you could do is you could get your compressor and allow just enough attack to come in, but with the threshold set pretty aggressively. So when it does come on, it compresses pretty hard. You could go to like a three to one with a slow enough attack time so you get a clang, and then the compressor comes in and grabs it. What will that do? It will go pang, pang, pang. It will exaggerate the front because it will allow quite a lot of signal to come through and then it will grab it. You could do that with the Rhodes and just get it a little bit more percussive. Why am I suggesting this? Well, maybe the reason that you don't believe, and I get it, you don't believe that these instruments could be driving the song, is because they have a lack of percussiveness. So with that in mind, go in there and see if you can add some percussion to it and see if it detracts or takes away from the other rhythm instruments. You'd be surprised. It might be that the Rhodes was intended and was recorded to maybe have more attack on it, but because of the nature of maybe the compression they were using on the way in, maybe the first beat did have some attack and then everything else squashed it. I've had so many things come to me over the years where they've been not over compressed, because that's the wrong word, but badly compressed, where the attack and release times just don't work with the percussiveness of an instrument. So you could go in there and try and recreate it with a slower-ish attack, but a more aggressive threshold, grabbing it a little harder. Try that, try messing with attack and release times. Otherwise, if it's just gonna be wash, you could go there completely. If you want it to just be wash, and you want your roads and your vibraphone and your strings to be washy, then put some delays on it. Put some, put some random delays, maybe some long, short, medium delays, all three kind of types, and just have them kind of like, you know, clang, 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 you know, clang, 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 you know, all quarter notes, triplets, eighth notes, all this kind of stuff, to just create some movement. And you could also have some fun with those. You could put those delays on. You could also mess with those delays and have them going through reverbs so they're more washed out or you could do the reverse. If they're like a downbeat chord, you could also put a gate on the delay and have it, just as it starts to decay, shorten a little bit. That could add a little percussive nature. And also then what you could do is distort it a little bit, make it a little edgier and darker and weirder. 
just have some fun with it and see if you can create some mood out of these elements. But the first thing I would do is explore that Rhodes track in particular and see whether it could have a little bit more attack introduced back into it. Transient designers, SBL transient designers, other transient designs like that are fantastic for introducing more attack. If you don't want to do it with a compressor and it seems a little complex for you to try, try just putting a transient designer on and exaggerating it. Another thing you'll see me do is send, like duplicate a track, so maybe take the roads, duplicate it, put a transient designer on it, and then just make it all attack, so it's just plap, 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 but send that to the delay. So then you get like a delay going kick, 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 just, just taking the attack only and having a delay. Have that maybe short one go to a reverb. So you get like, you get like an explosive reverbs. Have some fun with it. See if you can, you know, I think probably the thing I would suggest is go and look at our delay mixing tricks and our reverb mixing tricks. And I did some of that kind of stuff where I would take and just twist the way that things sound and then blend it back in. I think thinking like that will give the, the tracks more interest. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with some average sounding strings and average sounding roads and average sounding vib vibraphone, which might actually be okay if it's an organic jazz band or something. If not, have some serious fun with it. Many smart speakers and Bluetooth speakers today are sold as single mono speakers. Is this influencing your mixing knowing that so many people will listen to music in mono? I mean, most of the ones I've seen have a fake stereo. I mean, they have stereo imaging blasting out left and right. So even though they're a small unit and it might be cylindrical, they actually have stereo speakers built into them. The things that are in mono, yes, um, I do think about how something's going to fold back in mono. I think I'm blessed to be able to mix in stereo and then just check occasionally a mono and 99.9% .9 of the time it works and it folds in well. I think the things to do are always avoid widening plugins unless you're really forced into doing it. If you take like a, a, a stereo source and you try to make it sound wider by using widening techniques, you are messing with the phase. You're, you're, you're making it feel wider by flipping certain frequencies out of phase. Now, Leapwing have that great um, plug-in center one, I believe it is, and that's great because what they do is they're taking specific pieces of the frequencies and flying them left and right without messing with the phase. So it actually folds back into mono really nicely. So there are great plugins that do that. So check out Leapwing for that. Um, but otherwise, yes, I'm very conscious of not messing with phase, not using, you know, polarity phase tricks to make things sound wide because they only work when you're sitting between the speakers or you've got a pair of headphones on. So, but I've been that way forever because bad phase polarity issues bother the schnizzle out of me. If I put on a pair of headphones or sit between speakers and there's something that's not quite right, it makes me feel really awkward. So I'm very sensitive to that anyway. And I think as long as you're not using like little tricks, like making your bass sound stereo, which is really not smart. We were talking about this the other day on the panel, the mastering panel with Pete Lyman and Piper and, and, and Dave Gardner. And we all just came to that conclusion that the stereo widening is just not smart because it won't transfer to, uh, to vinyl and it certainly won't work in mono. So there's things to just avoid that are very, very straightforward. Making things sound ultra wide just for one listening position is not the smartest thing. And there are other ways of giving width and depth using effects like reverbs and delays, like maybe having a guitar on one side and having a reverb of it on the other side helps it feel like it's sitting more to the one side that you panned it. Having um, it delayed in the other one and detuned ever so slightly also makes it feel like they're, they're away from each other. And with the delay and the detuning, when they fold back into mono, there's very little or no phase issues whatsoever because you've detuned it, you've taken it away, and you've also delayed it. It's just thinking smart like that, using tricks that you know that will work in mono. I've been thinking that way forever. So regardless of what they're being played through, whether it be you know a cell phone or um, you know one of those cylindrical kind of things, we have one from Bose here. You know that that's all great. Um, I have a couple in the house like little Bluetooth speakers. I get it, but I think think smart, don't use widening plugins unless you're forced to, and if you are using a widening plugin, only use it on a single element inside of a mix. Don't please put it on your whole mix. You'll cause all kinds of havoc. All right, let's go and check out The Waves Berserk. Okay, so we have Alex Kalisa's Fire up here. Let's play a little bit of the song.
Okay, what do we have? We have Waves Berserk to try out. Let's start off with this. Here's a really, really dull sounding keyboard. I don't even remember what I was using. Let's go berserk on that. You know that's what everybody's gonna be saying. That's buzzed. So I'm gonna hit berserk. Nice. I already like it. It's already more interesting. Okay, what other characters got? Frenzy. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. I want to plug a guitar in. It's got that kind of like distortion pedal, fuzz pedal, you know, kind of, I can't think of a better word, but crapping out that kind of. <laughs> oh, that's going to be nice. We're going to stick that on a DI. We're going to find a DI and hear what that sounds like. Crushed. All right, great. This is another one of those plugins that makes average sounds really far more interesting. This is trippy. I think just having these presets is going to make my life so much easier. Squashed. Okay, so there's a mix control. So let's bring that down. That's nice. Interesting enough, it's been a bit of a theme over the last couple of weeks, hasn't it? It's been finding plugins that take the ordinary and make it more interesting. As people are increasingly moving more and more in the box, not just to mix, which is understandable because of the convenience of recalling a mix in the box. More importantly, we're moving into a place now where we're using so much virtual instruments. And as you have been heard me talk over the last four or five years of doing this, there used to be this incredible reality that, wow, I can get strings now and pianos and organs and synths that are completely and utterly incredibly recorded in wonderful concert halls. When they first came out, it was like, oh, the heavens opened up and we had the best piano ever. Now the problem is, is that everybody on the planet has access to those same sounds. So where you used to be like, oh, I've got this incredible Bosendorfer in, you know, Vienna from this concert hall, problem is so do you and another 400 million people. So we're all looking for ways to mess up those sounds. So here's my generic synth going to bypass. Might as well go to sleep with that one. Put, put on squashed and blended. Um, so it's like 50-50, a little bit over. Pretty wrong. It's wrongifying it. You know I love that word. It's wrongifying it. Okay, so squashed, loomy. What is that? Dizzy. Loud. Okay, freaky. That's actually not as freaky as some of the others. <laughs> Clipped. Fuzzed. Oh, I like that. Oh, you know people are gonna, once they get hold of this, they're gonna start writing into automation. Look at this. Okay, and then there's this density. Oh, look at that. So if you can automate all that stuff, you're gonna have a blast. Okay, so go berserk button to randomize distortion shape in surprising ways. Dynamic section sits before the distortion. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So you can push EQ into it. Gate expander, fantastic. Rider control to ride gain, nice. Feedback section with pitch, oh, and speed control to so reduce feedback pitch range and speed level. Internal, external side chain, wow, MS processing. Mid-side processing um, enables to distort just a kick or snare while leaving clean 
uh, sides clean. That's going to be really cool on the drums. We'll try that in a section. EQ section, temperature control for to control the overall color and warmth of the signal. Yowza. That's a lot going on. This could be a long review. Top end, low end. I like that. That's a big deal. A lot of saturation controls and distortions, one of the reasons why I don't like them is that they might usually just take the high mids and squash all those first, um, which is good when it's like overheads and cymbals bleeding into room mics. It's kind of nice that they saturate the high end first. But then, you know, then it, it, if you want to get that low end and fuzz it out and make it feel fat, it's kind of annoying. So this is the best of both worlds. So really low. Great. I like that a lot. So I can go down to the low end, blend that back in, now I've got an even fatter synth. Okay, let's just have a mess with the EQ. So what have I got here? I've got feedback. Oh, I can tune this? Oh! This song's in D. So let's see if I go to D on the low. High pass and low passing. Dynamics. <laughs> All right. I've just spent a week talking about randomizing things. You can tell I'm just like, I'm blown away. Talk about randomizing. This is what we've been talking about. HD on, what am I doing? This is so many things going on here. EQ, I haven't even got there yet. This is fantastic. No one sees me okay, it's ridiculously over the top and almost completely and utterly unusable, but not totally. It's just like adding wrongness. Like, it's exactly what I love. It's like, one of, the, one of the things about not being a keyboard player and not having racks and racks of great keyboards is I always get a little frustrated because I go to like super booths and I see these racks of really exciting like rat, Euro rack stuff and guys just sitting there putting through signals and doing stuff. And I'm always a little envious because I'm a guitar player and it's pedals and stuff. But, you know, I always want that randomness, that craziness.
Oh yeah. There it is. Oh yeah. All right, we've got no excuse for our music to sound really boring and average as guitar players now. Talking of guitars, let's see what we can do. Here's, here's the chorus guitars. And I've got a DI here, which I put some verb on with a harmony. Why don't we take this one here, which is a duplicate, and open up and go, you know I'm gonna do it, go berserk. All right, let's see what we got with our berserk. Immediately more interesting. <laughs> Mixed in, blended, bypass. Put it back in. Bring that volume down a little bit. I'm gonna copy that to the other one that's pan the other side, it's stereo version. And now listen to the guitars in the chorus. It's like instant insane Johnny Greenwood. It's what all of us as guitar players want with our pedals. And now we've got a plug-in. Okay, keep going. Okay, that was boring. Let's unboring that. Is that a phrase? Crappy little, it was, I can't remember what it was, what plugin I was using. I was think I was using, um, what's the bog standard one that comes with Pro Tools? Expand, that's just an expand sound. Before. And I'm already saturating it with something else. Start off where it's, that's the original sound, just put the berserk only.
love this. I love this. Infinite possibilities. You hear me say this a lot over the last week or two because I've been looking for these kind of things. It's so smart that that plugin companies, and my, I, my hat's off to you all are doing this, are going out and randomizing and wrongifying and doing these kind of stuff because this is what we need. It is going to make... It's going to make music a lot more interesting. And I used to spend years of time trying to figure out how to get drums to sound more exciting and weird. So let's try it. I've got many buses here that I was doing different things with with the Andrew Sheps plugin. Let's take this one here. Let's take one of those buses and let's grab the Berserk. Freaking awesome! That's a whole drum sound. Two two knobs, me not even knowing what I'm doing. So that was absolutely amazing. What I've been asking for, what I absolutely love, <laughs> wrongifying and randomizing and just downright destroying, adding musical notes to, making drums sound stupidly good. I mean, listen to what that, that drum sound. What it did to the guitars, what it did to the keys, it's great. And it's free. It's absolutely amazing. Download it. Download this plugin. It's really, really cool. So I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope that you're really enjoying, hopefully, this new plugin that you've downloaded for free. Just have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Don't forget to download it. Have, please leave us a bunch of uh, comments and questions below. Download the plugin, play with it, and then tell me what you think. I mean, we're just scraping the surface. This is absolutely fantastic. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing and messing around with cool plugins, and we'll speak to you all again very, very soon. Mm -hmm.